You are worthy, O oh Lord, you are worthy. You are worthy to be glorified. You are worthy, O oh Lord, you are worthy. You are worthy to be glorified. Ancient of days, we worship you. You are worthy to be glorified. You are worthy of our praise. We thank you for January. We thank you for February. We thank you for March. We thank you for April. We thank you for May. We thank you for June. Thank you for bringing us to the second half of this year. Thank you because we know that your grace that has been sufficient for us in the first half will also see us through the second half. Father, accept our thanks in Jesus' name. My Lord and my Savior, we are praying that in this seventh month of the year, you will perfect everything that pertains to us. You will answer our prayers perfectly. You will make our testimonies complete. Amen. Father, we pray that our joy will be full this month, that in every area of our lives, you will show yourself more than sufficient. And Lord God Almighty, I'm praying for all your children who are mothers or mothers to be in your own miraculous way. Meet all their needs. Amen. Let their joy be full. Amen. And those who are in particular cases waiting on you for the fruit of the womb so that they can move from being ordinary wives to becoming mothers, please answer them this month. Amen. And Lord God Almighty, all your children who have been faithful, in the payment of their tithes and in the giving of their offerings this month in the way only you can do it surprise them Amen. bless them beyond measure Amen. bless them so much that the whole world we know it pays to serve God Amen. and Lord today visit all your children Amen. heal the sick Amen. set the captives free and please, all those who are in sorrow, comfort them. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Well, let someone shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Well, you waved to two or three people and said uh, good morning or afternoon or whatever time it is in your place and say God bless you. And then you may please be seated. Today we are reaching out to you discussing the topic, the burden bearer. And our text will be taken from Matthew chapter 11 from verse 28 to 30. Matthew 11, 28 to 30. Jesus was speaking here and he said, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And I pray for every one of you listening to me today, the giver of rest will give you rest. Amen. Body, soul, and spirit. Amen. He went on to say, Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find the rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my body is light. 
I think I've shared with you in the past that the importance of a statement is determined by the one who made the statement. For example, you have a case in court. You go to court early that morning. And uh, the cleaner in the court saw you and said, uh, don't worry, you'll be discharged and acquitted. That cleaner is just wishing you well. But if the judge drives in, sees you standing by, and says, ah, I remember your case. Don't worry, today you'll be discharged and acquitted. You know you're on your way home, a free man. The one who is speaking here who says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy lady, and I will give you rest, is the one who is described as the burden bearer. Isaiah chapter 53, verse 3 to 4. Isaiah 53, 3 to 4. Tells us that is the one who carries our burdens, our sorrows, our griefs, by whose stripes we are healed. Is the one who says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Let's start with the word labor. Come to me, all ye that labor. The word labor is different from the word lock, walk. God expects you to walk. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 10, 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 10, the Bible says clearly, if you will not walk, you shouldn't eat. In fact, God expects you to walk diligently if you want to be promoted. Proverbs chapter 22, verse 29. Proverbs 22, verse 29 says, Seest thou a man diligent in his business? He shall stand before kings and not before me, men. So, walk is good, needful. God expects you to walk and to walk hard. But work is not the same thing as labor. To labor means to walk like an elephant and eat like a rat or an ant. To work very hard and have nothing to show for it. That's why those who do the hardest works and I paid the least are called laborers. They call them laborers. You go to the wharf or any other place and you see some strong people walking hard from sunrise to sunset. And at the end of the day, what they are paid can hardly keep body and soul together. That's laboring. I decree in the name that's above every other name, anything called labor in your life we cease today. You see, because in Exodus chapter 1 from verse 13 to 14, Exodus 1 from verse 13 to 14, the Bible tells us that the Egyptians made children of Israel to serve with rigor. They worked hard. But they are paid little. 
The plan of God, the burden bearer, the plan of the Lord Jesus Christ for you is that you are to prosper in everything you do. Psalm 1 from verse 1 to 3. Psalm 1 from verse 1 to 3 says, He wants everything you touch to prosper. Psalm 68 verse 19, Psalm 68 verse 19 says, God intends to load you with benefits on a daily basis. That you keep on succeeding. You enjoy your work because you are getting great results. So if you are laboring, the burden bearer is inviting you today, saying, put an end to labor. Let me give you rest. And then he said, not only those who are laboring, but those who are heavy laden, those who are carrying a burden, should come to him and find the rest. Now, what is a burden? A burden is a load. A heavy load. That you cannot put down. A load won't become a burden if it's a load you can put down no matter how heavy it is. But when a load is there, heavy, you are carrying it, and you can't put it down, it is called a burden. I'll give you an example. Second Kings chapter 5. Read it from verse 1 to 14. Second Kings 5. From verse 1 to 14, it tells you the story of Naaman. Successful in everything, popular, wealthy, but a leper. He had a load that cannot be hidden and that he could not put down. He was a leper. As soon as he's coming, people will say, here comes the leper. Until God, in his infinite mercy, used somebody to bring him in contact with the body bearer. He dipped seven times in Jordan and left the body there. He went out, went in, carrying a body. He came out. The body was gone. I pray for every one of you listening to me today that before you go to bed today, your bodies will be gone. Amen. I can give you another example. In Mark chapter 3, from verse 1 to 5. Mark chapter 3, from verse 1 to 5. The Bible tells us of a man with a withered hand. If the hand is withered, you can't hide it. Everybody will see here comes a man with a withered hand. And there's nothing he could do about it. The hand was withered until he came in contact with the body bearer. And then the withered hand miraculously became the same as the former. He went to church carrying a body. He returned home with the body gone. Every one of you who came to church this morning, 
And those of you who are listening to me all over the world, before the service is over, in the mighty name of the body bearer, your body will be gone. Oh, there are several examples. In the family of some people, you find just one black sheep, one troublesome fellow, a child of the family. So find somebody from the home of the wealthy and is caught shoplifting, stealing or smoking hemp, or taking drugs. And it's known to everyone, what kind of parents do, can they kill him or her? They have a body that they can't put down. Today, the body bearer will take over. Amen. Of course, we have several other cases, we have Sisters who by now should be married and be in their own home and they are still staying with papa and mama. And then you have people who have been trusting God for the fruit of the womb, but things that everybody knows about, but you can't put them down on your own. Today, the burden bearer will step in. Oh, you probably remember the testimony of that man during the Holy Ghost service we had at uh, the stadium in Surulere. Who had a goiter growth around his neck. Big one. What can he do about it? As soon as he appears, everybody will see the goiter. And he was there in the, uh, in the stadium, sitting high up there. When the word of God came, I said, there was someone here with a growth around his neck. The growth is gone. The sister sitting next to him, who had been peeping at the big thing since they came, turned to see, and like a bird, the goiter had flown away. Doesn't matter what it is that is your body today, it will fly away. Amen. Now, what will the body bearer require of you to take off your body? In return, he will want you to praise him. Remember today is Thanksgiving Sunday. I expect you to praise him like you've never done before because by the time you are going out of here, the body bearer will have done something special in your life. In Psalm 13, verse 6, Psalm 13, verse 6, David said, I will sing unto the Lord. Because he has dealt bountifully with me, I will sing unto the body bearer. In Psalm 30, verse 1, Psalm 30, verse 1, he also said, I will extol thee, O Lord, for thou hast lifted me up and has not allowed my enemies to triumph over me. The burden bearer expects praise from you, number one. Number two, he expects you to tell others of what he had done for you. He expects you to witness in Psalm 89, verse 1, Psalm 89, verse 1, David said, I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. With my mouth will I make known of his goodness, of his faithfulness to all generations. He said, I won't keep quiet. I will testify. In Mark chapter 5, from verse 2 to 20, 
Mark 5 from verse 2 to 20. We found a man there who had a burden. He was so mad, everybody knew he was mad. There was no hiding it. And there was no way he could cease to be mad. The burden bearer came, took away his burden, and when he came to the Lord, I said, Hey, thank you for what you have done. Uh, I want to be going with you now. He goes, No, go and tell others what God has done for you. There are some of us, God has already taken away our burdens, but we are not talking. We are not telling others. We are not witnessing. The burden bearer expects you to witness. Number three, the burden bearer expects you to become committed unto him. 100%. He wants you to come under a new management. That's why he said in the text we read, Matthew 11, 29 to 30, Matthew 11, 29 to 30, he said, take my yoke upon you. Learn of me. He said, my body is light. My yoke is easy. You have been serving the devil all these years. You see the result? Now I've taken away your body. Come over to my side. Come and serve me. And you won't have to carry any body anymore. That's why you hear Paul say in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 15, 2 Corinthians 12, verse 15, he said, I will gladly spend and be spent for my God. He, he, he knew what the situation was like before he met the Lord. When people see me singing and dancing, when at least once a year during the convention, I wear my native gown and I sing praises to God. They should know. I know where I was coming from. I knew the burdens I was carrying before I met the Lord Jesus Christ. Nobody compels someone who had met the burden bearer to serve him. You will do it with gladness. We rejoice. We knew the body we were carrying, and now we know we are free. And he gave the invitation, come. And the invitation is to everybody. And the invitation is still open today. Are you laboring? Come to the body bearer, and he will give you rest. Are you carrying a burden, a load so heavy that you wish it were gone, a load that you can't put down? Come. The burden bearer is calling you now. And the biggest burden you can ever carry is the burden of sin. Because each time you sin, something tells you what you are doing is wrong. And some of you can't just help it. Some of you, you don't want to be on drugs anymore. Come. The Savior is calling. Some of you don't want to keep on doing evil. Come. The Savior is calling. Some of you are tired of evil company. The body bearer is saying, come. Some of you are regretting that we join that secret society. The body bearer is saying, come. Come out of darkness. Come into light. And he will carry your body for you. And you begin to enjoy life, even life more abundantly. And so if you want to, 
Surrender your life to Jesus Christ. The altar is open. Wherever you are, you can move towards the altar of God if you are in the church setting, if you are in your home. Eh? Go on your knees before the one who can carry all burdens and ask him first and foremost to carry away the burden of sin from your life. And when sin is gone, ah, uh, all manners of blessings will follow. He says, come, and he will give you rest. So if you want to surrender your life to him, please bow your heads now and cry unto him and say, I have heard your invitation. O oh Lord, now I come. Save my soul. Take away the burden of sin. And I will serve you for the rest of my life. And why these people are praying, those who are coming to Christ now, the rest of us who are already children of the living God, cry to him, tell him what is it that is your burden, and say, O oh Lord, thou burden bearer, that problem that I cannot solve, that problem I can't hide. That burden that only you can roll off from me. Please, Lord, take it away today. And I will praise you. I will witness. And I will serve you like never before. Let's call on him. He's here. He's listening. And he's the one who said, come, and I will give you rest. Thank you, my Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Body bearer, the Lord Jesus Christ himself, the only one who can save. I thank you for your word. And I thank you for all those who have decided to say bye-bye to a life of sin and I'm asking you to save their souls. Please, my Lord and my Savior, receive them all. Let your blood wash away their sins. Make them white as snow. Save their souls, Lord, and write their names in the book of life and break the yoke of sin permanently from their lives. And Lord God Almighty, I pray that they will not go back into bondage, but they will serve you for the rest of their lives. As for all your children, those of us who have already surrendered our lives to you, and there is still one body or the other in our lives, Father, this very morning, step into our situation. Carry the body away and give us rest. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Now I want to rejoice with those of you who have given your life to Jesus Christ. I want to encourage you to contact me as soon as possible because I would love to know your name, your address, and your prayer requests so I can continue to pray for you. And uh, please, if you are not going to any redeemed church already, if you go to any redeemed church that is near you, you can talk to the pastor there. Tell him you've given your life to Jesus and you want to know what to do next, and they will guide you. God bless you. And the rest of us today, by faith, let us ac accept the deliverance from our bodies and spend quality time praising the body bearer. And from now on, you begin to enjoy his rest in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Praise the Lord.